So in our last lesson, what we did was we basically got the example carousel to work. And to get started on our Collaborate homepage, the first thing that we want to do is kind of get this navigation bar to sit the way that we wanted it to. The way that I had it designed in my original design was to have the Collaborate be fixed at the top of the page and spanning the entire width of the page. So let's kind of understand like how what's ha what's going on with the CSS and why is it working the way that it does. So if I right click and then click on inspect element, I get what's called the Chrome developer tools. Firefox should have something similar and definitely the modern IE versions also have the same. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I whatever I right click on and whatever I inspect element on is the first thing that it's going to attach itself to. So you can tell here that when I right click on the collaborant text, it went right to the link tag that's associated with the navbar brand. But if I hover over some of these other elements, uh, Chrome actually shows me with this highlighting what I'm looking over. And this is really useful for understanding, first of all, what does the structure of the page look like? How does the web browser interpret it? So for example, if I click on container, um, Bootstrap, what Bootstrap sees as the element is blue. So whatever the element actually is, the contents of the element, it's always within the blue area. Anything green is padding within the box, and anything orange is margins outside of the box. And this is really cool for understanding, for example, how margins and how padding affect um, your content. So I want to see actually this navbar wrapper, because that seems to be what's actually um, containing all of my navigation bars. So this little comment here is a bit of a lie. And if I click on navbar wrapper, on the right side I'll see all of the styles that are applied. And you can see that the carousel style is applying this margin top. So that if I toggle it, it pushes it up. So we've made some headway. Um, I think the best way for me to move forward right now, I have two options. Either I can go into the CSS file and, and remove this style, but this would make this presentation rule basically empty. I think I'm better off uh, removing this element completely. Then I'd have the additional work of making this span the whole width of the page. Now, why is that happening? That's the other thing that we might have to figure out. So if I remove this guy, well, what's pushing the nav bar, the navigation bar to the top of the page? Well, it would be this container element. Um, as you can see in the container, what the container does is, first of all, it applies this padding. So that's the green part. It's applying the padding within the box. But it's also doing something else that's really interesting. It's setting a custom width, that's the blue, and it's also creating this margin, that orange, that, um, that orange stuff. And if I keep scrolling down, those are the margins that are applied here because they're not crossed off. So if I toggle this, you can see that, okay, well, if I make a margin right, not auto, it's going to get pushed to the right. If I toggle this, it's going to be not pushed to the left. Um, other styles are probably being applied. So let's try, um, let's try deleting this and seeing what happens. So if I go to my HTML file, what I want to try and do is I want to delete these two elements. Now if I delete two opening tags, I have to delete the subsequent closing tags. And I want to do these guys. And to keep my code consistent, I want to de-indent, unindent these things twice because I've deleted two elements and that way I have a much more organized page. What happens if I refresh? Interesting. So now I've got this working. Now I have some odd spacing going on here. Why is that happening? Well, if I go down um, and look at the inspect element component, if I click here, we can see that it's applying a margin at the bottom of the navigation bar, this orange part that's pushing the slider down. I don't want that to happen. I actually want that to not be pushed down. So if I go back up, well, let's look at where, like, where is this margin coming from? Okay, we don't see it in bootstrap.min. If I go down, oh, as you can see right here in dot navbar, there's a margin bottom applied of 20 pixels, default from bootstrap. So if I kind of disable that somehow, mm, I prevent this problem and have a much more appropriate looking website. At this point, it would actually be advantageous for me to apply a custom style on top of Bootstrap. It definitely wouldn't make sense for me to modify the original Bootstrap because that's something that can change over time and I may be breaking other parts of the website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my own custom style sheet. So I need to create a new CSS file. 
I need to save it in the CSS folder and I'm going to call it custom.css and so what I want to do is I want to apply the style to the same class when I create a class selector I always start with the dot and the name of the class open it with the opening curly braces and I want to apply the same same rule margin bottom but instead of 20 pixels I'm going to apply 0 pixels and if I go back to index I need to link the styles to my HTML so again we'll do this business we've saved it in the CSS folder and it's for all style sheet. So yeah, the type text slash CSS was optional. Totally cool. Definitely works. Let's see if this had the effect that I'm looking for. Going back to this bad boy, refreshing, and we have our intended effect. And that's some pretty guten stuff. Now the other thing that I had was some of this some of these navigation elements were one moved to the right of the page as well the actual contents of the elements were different. I actually had links listing, about, and contact, I think. Uh, or sorry, I had listing, about, and account. I actually didn't have contact, but we may change that for this lesson. So our first objective is for one, um, to push that content to the right, but more importantly to understand what we're working with. Often you don't want to just kind of hack this together and make it work. You really want to understand what you're doing so you have greater control and can make changes much more easily. So the first thing we want to do is we want to fix this comment. This comment isn't, shouldn't be describing the body tag. It's actually describing the navigation bar here. So if we move that over here, fix the indentation to make it look neat, now we get some accuracy. Let's try and understand how this is actually working. Well, we know that this element it creates the navigation bar, and it's creating that kind of the black bar at the top that's making... Um, that's making that navigation bar. And then below it is a container which is likely centering the contents within that black bar. And now we have two parts, because they're on the same indentation level. We have the header. So if I toggle that, I can toggle things by clicking this arrow beside the line, uh, line number. And we also have this navbar collapse element. Okay, so what's in the contents of navbar header? Well, it looks as though I have this um, button. Not really sure what this button means, so I'm going to move on. And then we also have this navbar brand, and that's where we put the name of our site. So I'm going to toggle that, and then I'm going to toggle the navbar collapse element. That contains a list item with all of my navigation contents. So probably the first thing I want to do here is I actually want to edit this. It also seems that um, this first list item has a class called active. And if I look at it on the page, that has a little black background. So that's probably what's causing that style to be there. I really don't want this to be happening on my page. So I'm just going to change that. And I'm also going to change this to be listings, about contact. Cool. Now, this pound symbol basically means it's an empty link. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to make the rest of them empty links as well. Interesting. The other element that I have is this drop down. So with this drop-down, we can do some pretty interesting stuff. Um, a drop-down basically allows us to have a series of elements. And again, it seems complicated. It seems like there's a lot going on here. But at the end of the day, it's really just HTML code, properly formatted, and very um, smartly placed in the context of a much bigger part. So we have our list of elements. And what the programmer has decided to do is to create a drop-down within a navigation bar is to simply add another list item. That list item has a class called dropdown, which is probably going to have some interesting features associated with it. Within that list item is the name of the dropdown. And so here, this part corresponds with the name that we see here. I want to change that to accounts, account. -a. And then now we want to have a list of menus, or a list of links within the dropdown. And this kind of text corresponds directly with the text shown here. In fact, they have some other elements here, like a title, as well as uh, a line. And that can be accessed through these two elements. And it's intuitive for us to understand this because here we have a class called divider. It seems to be empty, so it would make sense that that's a line. And here's a class called drop down header with the text nav header. Another way you could understand this is again by inspecting the element and seeing where it is in the HTML as well as what style rules are applied to it. But what I need is I basically need to change these guys to only be sign up and log in because that's what I have in my final example. And log in. So let's see if that edits my content. 
Cool. Moving forward. Yes. $19 billion are coming right at me. Now, the last thing I want to do, and this is purely preference-based, just showing you the ropes of Bootstrap, I want to push all this stuff to the right. And I want it to be within the overall box, within the nav bar, constrained to the center, but I want it to be at the, at the right side of my page, so that doesn't really seem all clumped together with the logo here. Now, Bootstrap has a couple of helper classes, and one of them is called Pull Right, that will actually pull content, pull the content within a box to the right of whatever it's in. So if this div is in a container, and I apply the pull-right class to it, it's going to pull the contents of all of this to the rightmost part of a container. So it has this effect, but why did it work the way that it did? The reason it worked the way that it did um, is best explained by the, uh, pull, by, the, by the inspect element function. So here's my container, and you can see something interesting. The container has a static width of that blue part. That's defined over here in the bootstrap.min.css uh, file. It applied a fixed width of 1170 pixels. So with that, when I pull my navbar collapse element, uh, pull it to the right, it's going to pull it to the right of that fixed width. This is really important because this kind of function only works on fixed width elements that we explicitly define using our CSS. The last thing that I want to explain about this navigation bar is all this collapse business. So I mentioned early on that Bootstrap really does a lot of the legwork for you in terms of getting you up and running, and more importantly, getting your site as compatible as possible with different form factors. So what happens if I shrink the size of this browser? Well, you can see the contents adapting to the size of my window. If I keep going, at some point, this navigation bar is going to get too big for the browser to handle. And it creates this little, little hamburger icon that if I expand, it actually creates this effect. Interesting stuff, right? So what's the, well, the reason why that's happening is, is that's what the collapse element really is doing. In fact, I think that the reason why this odd effect is why is it all being pulled to the right is that I'm actually pulling it, pulling the div to the right, whereas I should probably be pulling the uh, UL class. I want to be pulling those list items to the right. Let's see if that changes the effect. Perfect. That creates something a little bit better.